have my literary criticism slash more classics shelf. It goes all the way from there to over there with my Jane Austen collection on that side. So once more, my camera is at an extremely odd angle, so I'm going to try and do this quickly. So I have Fox on Fiction, which is a TV series that was like turned into this book and it's basically about all of the classics. I love it to pieces. I have, is there a lot wrong with this sentence? Only I would buy a puzzle book that is just grammar. It's basically correcting people's grammar. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a grammar Nazi. Um, then I have Oscar Wilde's stories for all ages, which have little side notes by Stephen Fry. I have like a little Stephen Fry shrine just here. It's like Stephen Fry. I have Stephen Fry, The Ode Less Traveled, which is a book about poetry, which is freaking amazing and I love it. I have The Fry Chronicles, which a friend bought me for my birthday a couple of years back, or Christmas, can't remember, which I am going to read over Christmas, hopefully, fingers crossed. In case you haven't noticed, I love Stephen Fry so much, he's amazing. Then I have my grammar and I, and I before E except after C, two wonderful grammar books, like I said, grammar Nazi. I have The Art of Fiction by David Lodge, and David Lodge is a well-known critic of literature and my English teacher said that he was one of the best people to read so I'm going to read that. I have Beginning Theory by um, Barry. He is another very well-known critic and um, literary theorist. Would you call it a literary theorist? I don't know but he's also very good. I have The Book Lover's Companion which was in my book haul. Clever Maids, The Secret History of the Grim Fairy Tales. This is all about how dark the Grim Fairy Tales was and it's really really interesting. I also have How Shakespeare Changed Everything by Stephen March Marche? Mar Marche? I'm gonna say Marche because it sounds French. Um, then I have my Scrabble dictionary because when I play Scrabble I have lots of disputes about whether words are allowed on the board. I get serious about my Scrabble, so I bought a Scrabble dictionary for 99p from the works so that we could avoid said disputes. Okay, so moving on, I have The History of English in 100 Words, which is a book I read on my work experience all about the origins and etymology of words, which was freaking amazing. I have Silly Novels by Lady Novelists by um, George Eliot. I have Days of Reading by Marcel Proust, as lots of people have been correcting me. The cover is misleading, so I pronounced it wrong the first time I said something about it. But now I'm correcting myself, so people can stop commenting on that video. I have Why I Write by George Orwell, and all three of these are part of the Penguin Great Ideas series, which is really lovely, and all of the covers are absolutely beautiful. I have A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway, which is pretty much like the oldest Penguin classic that I own and it's, oh, it, I can't wait to read it. I've never read any Hemingway so I'm really excited. I have Love in a Cold Climate by Nancy Mitford which was in my last haul, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, Moria, more, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I have Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl, The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger which I believe they're releasing a sequel to it even though he's dead, he left it in his will to be released and um, yeah. Not too sure about that. Then I have a little coffee table book, Tips for Vintage by Kath Kitson. You've got to love Kath Kitson if you love vintage because it's just amazing. Then I have this one. I actually got this at a vintage fair or an auction in my village. And um, yeah, it's basically Shakespeare's tales in a nutshell. So some wonderful author has put all of these... Shakespeare's stories into this one book and it's amazing. I'm trying to sort of hold my tripod with one hand and open this with the other. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, it's really lovely, it's really old and it was really cheap. So bonuses all around. So I have Marcel I.M.'s The Man Who Walked Through Walls, which is another collection of short stories that I bought in Bath. I have my little Jane Austen shrine interrupted by a few things here. I did it kind of in height order because things that aren't level really irritate me. So I've got Jane Austen's little advice book. I have the Jane Austen handbook. And then I have the little dictionary of fashion by Christian Dior. You've got, oh my God, Christian Dior is a god. Um, 
the guide to Queen's English, which I got when um, I went to Buckingham Palace, which is amazing. Um, then I have Jane Austen's Guide to Good Manners, which is always good because everybody should have good manners. Um, being Elizabeth Bennet, create your own Jane Austen adventure, which is the funnest thing ever. You just like work your way through the Jane Austen novels as the characters answering questions and oh my god, it's so funny. You have to like pe turn to page numbers when you do your answers, it's hilarious. <laughs> and then you have Jane Austen's Guide to Romance, which is necessary in my life. Um, the Goddess Guide, which is something my mum bought me before she went to New York. We'd had an argument the night before and she left really early in the morning and I found it on my bedside table when she left and I was like crying because I didn't want her to leave. This is my Dude It Yourself Adventure Time journal that Izzy bought me. I also have William Shakespeare's Star Wars right here, which is freaking awesome. And then on the last two, I have my copy of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare and the Jane Austen Guide to Happily Ever After, which was in my last book haul. Okay, so this shelf is something that you've not seen before. It's on the other side of my bedroom. Yes, I have three bookshelves. Oops, I have lots of books. Never mind, but um, this one is less ordered and more haphazard. So let's just get right to it. So the first shelf looks a little something like this. I have all of my sort of beautiful pretty little books on this shelf and my fairy tales and books that don't fit on the other shelf. As you can see I've got my little little read books signs up there which is freaking awesome. I bought them in America, they were in my last haul. I have my bible up here and then I have my dance trophy that I won. I got first place and a light. So I'm going to get right to it. So first off, I have my Jane Austen, the story of her life and works, which is in my last haul. The Shakespeare version of it, which is Shakespeare, the life and works and the treasures. I said that wrong, but oh well. This is a fairy tale book that um, a group of family friends bought me for my christening and I've had it ever since. And it is one of my favourite, favourite books on my shelves. I then have The Hunger Games, the official illustrated movie companion. This is my mum's um, Disney's fairy tale book. She had it when she was younger and then she passed it on to me. I always used to go around to my nan's house and read it and it's just really lovely and it's beautifully illustrated. Then I have The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, which is something my dad used to read to me. Then I've got The Debrett's Etiquette for Girls, which is basically everything you need to know about good manners. Like I said, over on the other shelf, everybody should have good manners, so... This is cool. Then I have my hardback copy of The Night Circus. I have my Jane Austen seven novels, Leather Bound. My only Folio Society book, which is Utopia by Thomas More. I actually became obsessed with this book because of the film Ever After, if you've ever seen it, her book that she keeps from her dad. It's basically a Cinderella story, but the book that she keeps from her dad is Utopia. And sadly, it does get thrown in the fire, but... It's like her mantra and I love it and just, ah, it's so good. Watch it. I then have Prisoners in the Palace, which is a wonderful book. It's just so amazing and so beautiful. I then have I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, which was amazing. I have all of my Jane Austen novels again, apart from this one. I have Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, Pride and Prejudice, Northanger Abbey, Emma Mansfield Park. So all of them are there. I then have my two book journals, which is where I write all of my notes. Um, I got these from Paper Chase. I got one for my birthday and the other one I bought because I wanted another one. But these are really, really useful and they actually have little sections to do books you've borrowed and lent so you don't lose track and put notes in about your books. I'm going to close that because that's one of my next reviews. So I don't want you to see it before I've filmed it. I then have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, A Game of Hide and Seek by Elizabeth Taylor, and Lolita by Vladimir Nabkov, which is hard to pronounce. Finally on this shelf I have my collection of poetry. So I have Dante, um, Dante's Inferno, and this is like an epic poem about a journey to hell. It's in my last haul. Um, I also have all of these Phoenix poetry anthologies, which I bought from the works for 99p each. If you don't have any of these, I would seriously recommend going to buy one. I have Oscar Wilde, William Shakespeare, John Donne, Edgar Allan Poe, Robert Burns, Alfred Lord Tennyson, Emily Dickinson, 
and Christina Rossetti. I like poetry, so yes. My next shelf is a little bit of a miscellaneous shelf. It's kind of childhood books and pads and books that don't fit anywhere else and loads of pens. So I have on here, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, which is one of my favourite childhood books and it's so funny. Um, the Silver Slippers, which is another one of my favourite childhood books. The Evolution of Mara Dyer, which I didn't want to put next to The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer because it's a different height and that would not be cool. I have I Was Jane Austen's Best Friend and the sequel Jane Austen Stole My Boyfriend. These are really good for any young readers that like Jane Austen because I read these in like year nine after I'd read no before I'd read Pride and Prejudice and they really made me want to read Jane Austen's novels so they're really great. I also have Ballet Shoes by Noel Streetfield or Streetfield I have when you pronounce it. I have Threads by Sophia Bennett which was a phenomenal book it was um it was so great it dealt with like international relations and things like that so well and it's sort of does it through fashion there's this girl who's in um a runaway from another um, country and she is amazing at designing clothes. I read this when I was like going through my stage of, of being obsessed with textiles but um, I'm still obsessed with textiles but not as much. Um, then I have I Coriander by Sally Gardner which is another amazing book. I love it to pieces. It's very dark but it's amazing. I also have Playing with the Grown Ups by Sophie Dahl who is Roald Dahl's granddaughter and this was a very good book also. It's a very good coming of age book for anyone who's growing up. Then I have my two lovely Orchid Books Shakespeare little editions, the children's editions. I have A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Tempest. I also have my Molly Moon's Incredible Book of Hypnotism, which was probably my favourite childhood book after this one right here. Um, this is an amazing book and it's just... I've read it so many times. Next I have Matilda by Roald Dahl, which is one of my favourite childhood books ever, and I just can relate to Matilda so much. I think any book lover can relate to Matilda. Then I have The Suitcase Kid by Jacqueline Wilson. I used to love Jacqueline Wilson, and I've read pretty much every single one of her books. The next part of this shelf is less books and more pads, but I have my pot of pens here for revision. I keep it topped up at all times. I have loads of Sharpies and my awesome pen that Cecily got me for my birthday that I use to annotate. I then have my flick back version, flick back, flip back version of Sense and Sensibility. I have a Dutch phrase book because I'm hoping to go to Amsterdam to go to the Anne Frank Museum house place and Leiden um, soon, hopefully. I have a little pad with cupcakes on it that I got for my birthday one year. I used it for my homework. I got this one for my birthday this year. I have the Hunger Games Tribute Guide. Oh, everything's falling over. I have, um, Stars and Planets book. It's really great. I need to move this ribbon. Ah, it's not working. But, um, this my friend Miles bought for me for my birthday and he also got me a star, so... I can find it. So I, stars and planets really interest me. I don't know why, but they do. I've never really liked science, but that one aspect of it I've always really liked. Then I have a sketchbook where I just do random drawings when I get bored. I have my ladybug pad that was in my last haul, my literary transport pad, um, a guide to Paris because Paris is one of the most beautiful, amazing places on earth, um, and a picture um, book of my levers, um, levers day in year 11. Oh, it's upside down. I've got some really flattering pictures in here. Mm, yeah. Oh, look at these braces. Oh, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> moving on. I have Philippa, Philippa? I have Philippa Gregory's The Kingmaker's Daughter, which I was supposed to read for history but didn't read, but I am still holding out hope that I will read it at some point because apparently Philippa Gregory's books are really amazing. And then I have these fabulous, fabulous, fabulous sticky notes with sewing machines on them. They are so beautiful. They're from Paper Chase and they are just amazing. They're, oh, they're so pretty. Now I have probably the most boring shelf. This is my school shelf where I keep all of my school books, etc, etc. Um, yeah, so I have a pad, some folders with my work in, my Crusades textbook, another pad, literature criticism and style textbook, study and study skills handbooks. These Palgrave Macmillan handbooks, if you ever need any help with anything in class or university, 
they are probably the best books you could buy to help you. Um, I have a UCAS book with universities in it that specialise in journalism, broadcasting, media production and performing arts. That was when I was looking, that's 2012, so that's a while back. Um, my poetry anthology, anthology, anthology of Here to Eternity, which is the one we're studying this year. We're studying war poems this year, which is so good because they're so interesting and so easy to rip into. Um, how to write better essays and how to begin studying English, two more Palgrave Macmillan study guides. As I said, they're really good. I have all of my York notes here that help tremendously with everything. I have um, a book of critical essays on Anthony and Cleopatra. Um, it's a Longman book of critical essays. I did my coursework on this last year and I freaking love it. Some of the essays in here are so interesting and I only needed to read like two, but I read all of them and they were just amazing. Um, I have Spark Notes for the Cold War. I have the Faber book of monologues for my drama. Um, Martin Crimp plays. I did a monologue from there last year for my drama. Um, the, Wonder World of Dis the Wonderful World of Dissocia by Anthony Nielsen. If you have not read this and you like surreal, odd, things seriously read it it's so so good and it's just wonderful and funny and really dark at the same time um this is my copy of Antony and Cleopatra that I annotated to death and the Duchess of Malfi which I also annotated to death I have Death of a Salesman and Glass Menagerie and A Streetcar Named Desire so all of these books that I've studied um this one is <laughs> doesn't is does is not as bad as it sounds it's a play that we did for our drama GCSE, and the name is really dodgy. It's called Pornography, but it's nothing to do with it. It's actually to do with the 7-7 bombings that happened in London. It's absolutely nothing to do with inappropriateness or nudity. It's fine. Nobody got naked. It's okay. Finally, on this side of my shelf, I have my little flower box of paper clips and equipment that I'm not going to lift up because it's um, going to fall. I have my time management booklet, a literary theory, very in, very short introduction, which is an Oxford version. I have my postcards from Penguin. I have my Collins Dictionary and my Oxford Dictionary of Literary Terms. Also in here, I have things like post-it notes and lovely... Um, flashcards that I can use to revise with. Um, that probably wasn't the best shelf to end this on.